Hello everybody, it is the Green Clan here, and uh, we have uh, another wonderful discussion for you. We're going to be talking about the ending of Monster. Now obviously this call is going to have some spoilers, so if you haven't read the manga, you probably shouldn't even be listening to this call anyway, but I assure you it's really good. Check it out and then come back to it. Otherwise, that's what we're talking about. Fuck oh, off. Basically. Alright, I'm Merlin here, and I'm hosting, and uh, do the character analysis and all that stuff, as you guys know. And I've got a couple awesome people here with me, some of my good friends. I've got Mr. Saiyan Z3. Hello. All right. And I've got uh, Walking Double O Dead. I'm the Walking Zero Zero Dead. <laughs> and I review anime so you can enjoy it. Yeah. Stole something. <laughs> and finally, the anime hero. Hey, guys. I'm the anime hero. I collect boxes because I enjoy uh... them. <laughs> Got it wrong here, Alex. I'm the. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. King I'm the anime elf. hero, and I'm the king of unboxing. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> king, the the king of the king of <laughs> anime boxers. You got me fucked up now. Like fuck all that. The the king of anime <laughs> unboxing, and he unboxes so you can enjoy watching him box stuff. <laughs> Unbox the things because this is going nowhere, in Merlin. It's okay. It's okay. I, I know it's going nowhere. It's all about Pluto. <laughs> it's all about Pluto. No, 20th Century Boys actually. Um, yep. Buster Keel. Buster Keel. Buster Keel. Um, all right. Well, oh, we're going to talk about spoilers. So, uh, I don't know, guys. Uh, who wants to start first? Monster. <laughs> monster. Well, Yo, monster. Uh, uh, monster has a like a really great, a really great story, and it has a lot of thrills and twists, and uh, it it's kind of is really a great character piece, kind of both for Tenma and for Johan, but. Um, well, I, Johan is pretty much built up to be this uh, evil uh, being, basically. He's like the utmost worst representation of everything that mankind is. And he kind of has like this really great ability to manipulate people throughout the series. And we slowly learn a little bit more about his backstory. And eventually we learn that the Red Rose Mansion, there was a royal government group that basically took a lot of young children and brainwashed them to try to make them super soldiers. And Johan is kind of a result of that, as is his sister. We learn about later is uh, Nina, obviously, and I guess what I wanted to primarily talk about is just kind of the climax of the series, like the last volume. Uh, it felt like it was leading to something uh, ultimately uh, more underwhelming and a lot less epic than I thought it was going for. It was a little more subtle, and uh, honestly, I didn't really like the ultimate ending with Johan more or less being seen as more sympathetic, which I think makes him honestly less intimidating and villainous, which is the thing that everybody loves about him. I also kind of had an issue with the fact that it wasn't quite as epic. It was just kind of this uh, this population of a small town turning against each other. And ultimately what happens with Johan essentially being set free and Tenma not killing him, but going so far as to save him again, it made it seem like everything that occurred in the series kind of led essentially to nothing. So I thought it was a bit underwhelming, and it was uh, kind of not what I expected from the ending and it, it was a little disappointing for me uh other than that i really did enjoy it but it, it was kind of open-ended and i i had some issues with it so i want to see what you guys thought about that uh z you want to start sure um well i mean we all know that uh johan was operated on at the end and he was saved yet again by tenma right um but the thing with the the problem that i have with that i mean i think the obvious thing is that well johan like like merlin you were saying is that um he was built up to be like the the Antichrist. the monster, and pretty much, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the culmination of everything that's wrong with humanity. He was right? pretty much alluding to it, yeah. 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 So, for Tenma of all people, and it, the, the ironic part about it is that he's a doctor, right? Like you would you would imagine like doctors are like good people, but yet he's saving he's saving someone like Johan of all people, mm -hmm. who's a serial killer. He's done this. He's done that. Right. Um, the question is yeah. why, though. Like, I, I, yeah, but, I never understood, like, why he did it. Yeah. I well, uh, the whole, like, underlying theme of the show is that all life's equal, no matter what you've done. No matter if you're a rapist or a killer, he'll he'll save you. Because that's his job, and that's, he's a pure hearted person, you know? Yeah, but that, A doctor okay. doesn't matter if you're a rapist, he's still going to try and help you, regardless. You well, I, 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 yeah. I get that. Uh, hold on here. Uh, he's not gonna let you die. Oh I no, mean, I, no, Dad. I I do get that, uh, and I mean he did save him before, and I I understand what he did with he did, but the whole plot of the series was him kind of going against his principles for this one exception because this person he saved 
did so much worse and he felt so guilty about it. He seemed pretty dead set against yeah. killing Johan. And then towards the end, he's like, ah, oh, you know what? I'll give him a second chance. I'm like, I don't care what's happened to this guy. I think at this point he should have been taken out because that was the whole point of what the series was building towards. See what I mean? And it would have been, I think, I think it would have been, it would have challenged Tenma's character too because that's the one line that he wasn't willing to cross. I thought, I thought right? that, and I thought that was the whole point of the show was him. Yeah, but, but the whole, yeah, but he does struggle throughout the whole thing because obviously he goes to train to kill him, and even when he shoots like Roberta in the burning down like library, he's still he's like really depressed after it, and he feels like he's done the wrong thing, even though it's like in self defense. He still feels like you know, like there's a lot of weight on his shoulders because he's he's had to shoot. Well, he thinks he's killed him. Obviously, he doesn't kill him, but he thinks yeah. he has. That that is true, but so, that was a different circumstance. I mean, Robert wasn't exactly the same level yeah. as Johan, obviously. But if he but if he would have killed killed Johan, mm-hmm. unlike when he shot Roberta, that would have just been in like cold blood, and he would have been no better than Johan anyway. Uh, well, and that goes completely. That goes against everything that Tenma that's is. That's true, but I, I guess you could argue that uh, he's kind of trying to defend the world from Johan and all his deeds. He is, but the thing is, though, is that when, whenever I've spoken to it, because I've recommended this to a lot of people, and a lot of people have spoken to me about it, and they've really liked it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people, they really forget about the whole Free Frogs, the Nina revolution, you know, like her forgiving Johan, mm-hmm. and that whole like, the whole mother and all this backstory. And they, they never include this in the ending of the yeah, series. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. That is true. <laughs> a lot Because a lot of people just go... They they forget about all that amazing like backstory and character development and it just goes to that town and they go oh well you know Temma didn't blow his brains out and I really hate it but uh, I'm trying to say oh, I forgot where I was going now. <laughs> uh, well hold on a sec that uh, hero you you want to say something about it? Oh yeah yeah because um, going back to that conversation is that I, I I do find it like a bit underwhelming the fact that you know even though it wasn't Temma that shot him the point is that um. You know, some other random guy managed to shoot him. Yeah, right? And then we go to Tenma, which it goes to that decision whether you should save him or not. And then the problem with me is that I understand the value of not being wanting to, you know, fall onto Johan's means. It's kind of similar to, you know, with the, with the same cat and mouse game between Batman and Joker. But the, but the thing mm-hmm. is, the, the, someone of the magnitude of Johan, even though he has, like, this sympathetic and tragic past or whatever, he still has to be he's, stopped he's, in one way or He's really form. dangerous. Even if you don't kill him, like, even if you don't kill him, even you, at least got to well, put him in that, prison of some well, sort. that's but. what made it worse, is that not only did he not kill him, okay, he saved his life, and then he gets away yeah. again, so... Yeah, so... Yeah, but the, th- the thing is, though, is that a lot of people think that Johan, as I was saying in Merlin's comments, everyone thinks that Johan's goals, they're two goals, which we're all assuming that they are, but they're not if you think mm-hmm. about it. Everyone thinks he's either going to try and kill all of humanity and be the ruler and then commit a perfect suicide... Or, but if you think about everything that he does in the series, mm-hmm. he flushes out and strings along absolutely everybody to do with 551 Kingdeheim and the Red Road Mansion. Mm-hmm. And he, he gets all of them to come to him and he slowly kills off every single one mm-hmm. of them and wipes out any evidence of their existence. Oh, so his oh, his oh, true, true goal is to revenge Nina for everything that they, you know, like Bonaparte did to her and for everything that people did to him and, you know, like 551 Kingdeheim. His goals aren't, you know, to take over the world. Well, they're really, if you think about it, they're revenge. Well, that's that's understand. That's understandable. I mean, I I do get that, but the, my problem with that is that that made the whole revelation and the conclusion of the series a lot more underwhelming and less epic than it looked like it was building to be. That that was my big problem with it. Yeah, but that's what that's what I was saying earlier, though, because like Nina, when she you know gets her memories mm-hmm. back and she realizes everything that Johan's gone through and everything that he does for like Johan when he kills the. The people that help them, the two old couple, uh, and he only does this because the, they're going to phone the police, and then you know he's scared that they'll go back to you know Bonaparte. And also when he kills the the the, the Liebers, he does that because Bonaparte turns up. So she forgives him because she realizes every you know evil deed he's done has been for her, and you know to help her. And at the same time, you know Tenma learns of this as well. So that's you know Tenma gets like sympathy for like johan and that's probably why he really you know holds back from like killing that's him. i i can understand that it's just that i think that as dangerous as johan was well, let me ask you this if if he if he would have killed johan at the end of the series mm-hmm. what would that have made Tenma though and what would have come from that if he you know if he, he, killed he him? would have taken down the monster i mean it wouldn't necessarily been well, I, would, I had ideas for that already because i mean with that obviously Tenma would have more than likely be arrested or by that he, point, he, it but... would probably be a bittersweet yeah. ending anyway but at least it would have been like you know this co- accomplishing the goal i mean it didn't have to be easy it didn't have to be like 
that he was a straight-up bad guy. You could still have sympathy for him and say, well, he's still a really dangerous guy that needs to be taken out. I mean, he... Yeah, because what I, what I was thinking, because I didn't want, you know, Tenma to just kill him and, you know, be, like, all happy-go-lucky because then it would just seem as if, you know, we could do anything in our pursuit of and justice. That could really, and, and that would really contradict, it really contradict his character, too. Yeah, that's why I like that Tenma yeah. would have to grieve. And, you know, the fact that he was a doctor, you know, him getting arrested, him locked in jail, that would pretty much reflect that... Um, Fuck, 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 fuck. I'm forgetting the word I was going for. Um, the torment that he had to go through with that decision, because, I mean, even though he values life, there's just one, regardless of his reasons, whether justified or not, Johan really did go a little overboard, man. I mean, you saw what he did to that detective, like, for example, that, you know, he just got him drunk. I mean, what yeah. was the reason behind that, actually? Because I don't... Well... It was just because he, they were he, suspecting he, he, he him. He got very it? close to revealing... Who Johan was well, and proven his identity. There, there you go. No, there Johan, Johan never killed an innocent person uh, unless they well, got. No, wait, 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 wait. He never killed an innocent person unless they got to a point where they were very dangerous towards him right. getting his ultimate right, revenge. That's, right, that's, like, but like, towards himself, that, that's though. That, that's that, the thing. That is something very selfish. That's the thing. All right. You know, actually. Yeah, but yeah, but the thing is, though, if 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 that's <laughs> what you've set your whole life out to do is to find all these military people find all these people that have experimented on you and your sister. You're not going to care about anyone else in the way. I mean, that's that's his tunnel vision. He's got to get to, the, you know, Well, he wants his revenge. You know basically. who he actually reminds me of? Johan Liebert is a lot like Hannibal Lecter because he normally really went after bad people, but he took out innocent people if they were, like, going to catch him or get in way with his plans. But that still doesn't mean that yeah. Hannibal Lecter isn't a monster, though. He isn't an evil guy that needs to be put away. Well, I mean, I... I get, what but I'm the thinking, whole, the whole, like I said, the whole underline of the series is, is that all life's equal. So, if Tenma had have, you know, killed him, that's, he would have proven Johan's whole point that all life isn't equal. Because, you know, at the very beginning of the series, Tenma, the whole reason that you know Johan is so like gravitated towards Tenma, in my opinion, uh -huh. is because he proves at the start of the series, the very beginning of the series, that all life isn't equal. But he does it in a way that he saves lives. Because remember, he, he's got to either operate on the mayor or he's got to operate on the small child. And he, he picks Johan. So obviously, this obviously goes back to the whole, you know, Johan's mother, you know, throwing, like, Johan, but then stopping and then throwing um, Nina at, like, Bonaparte. And the mother proves to Johan at a very young age that screws them all up, that all life isn't equal because, you know, they're twins. They're identical. They're, they're equal, basically. So he, he wants to break Tenma by, you know, making him commit, you know, kill him, basically. Well, so he would have if if he if Temma would have killed him, he would have proven you know Johan's ideology that all life isn't but, equal. Yeah, but you still can't have him. <laughs> yeah, that, this this is the thing. This is the thing. I no no, 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 no dead, 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 dead. Wait, he wait doesn't, he dead. Doesn't have to hold kill on, him. I mean, he could have easily gone to hold prison. Hold on a second, dead. This is the thing. I'm I'm okay with that. I, I understand that. That that makes sense. But that yeah. doesn't mean that someone else couldn't have you know either killed Johan or put him away in prison. And him just being let go, it's like okay, Temma didn't kill him, but. He just like lets him go. Like they just let him go. I mean, there's this guy is a really screwed up, dangerous guy. I mean, he didn't seem like he was totally redeemed by the end. Yeah, but that's that, that's the open ending of this series, though. It's like, did he die or did he, you know, escape from the prison out the I window? I think it's pretty obvious he escaped. <laughs> well, I don't know. If, yeah, but it's, it's not it's not obvious though, because I mean, because he goes there and there's just nothing there. I mean, no, the guy no, goes dead, there. Dead, oh, dead. Hero knows where I'm coming from. Hero, go ahead. Yeah, uh, because I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. Because the, the thing is, man, like that. I don't. I am. I'm not gonna oppose you anything on your, like what you think. Like, no, I totally agree with you and everything. But the thing is, I, I still feel even if he wasn't like, killed, he has to be restrained. He has to be put in a high security way. prison forever. <laughs> he has to be restrained, man. I mean, yeah, but for, for example, okay, for example, so the I mean, thing is though, is he's, he's he's been shot in the head like twice. So it didn't matter yeah, before so, though, did it? Like a coma or he dies. So, I mean, they probably don't yeah. think this guy's ever gonna yeah, wake that's up. That's what they thought last time, and look what happened. He's the freaking monster. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but at the time though, they didn't know that he was gonna, you oh, know, that he was no. basically manipulating. Yeah. Evil people. Yeah, yeah, like, that's the thing, man. I mean, the, the dude, man, Yo, the Johan Lieber, man. I mean, for fuck's sake, man, dude, what he did to those other, um, fuck, with those psychiatric, psycho, <laughs> psychologists. Okay. Those are the psychiatric ward, man. I mean, like, yeah. just by torment. I mean, the, the thing is, a guy relishes in torment the things he does. He does. I mean, just look at the very first scene, actually, the very first scene where he mates Dr. Tenma, he kills yeah, some freaking I, um, Mr. It's true. He, he, in, he really likes very but, cold, savage he, way, and everyone uh, associated with him knows that he's very cold-hearted. Yeah, I mean, and just, you know, he really despite, despite, and, basically what he was trying to say is despite his motivations, the guy's still evil and likes being evil. 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm totally not denying that. I know. I know. He loves it. But... Well, yeah, but the point is, you can't like, let a guy like that. The, the reason, but, the, but that's the yeah, but that's the thing though. That that's the whole point of the series. Is all is all life equal? No matter what you've done, no matter how evil you are, no matter how, uh, you know how many people you've killed. Uh, and that's that's what that's well, what. Well, okay, it has bring up an interesting question. Then it's it's not an easy answer necessarily. No, it's not. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean. Like, but that's the whole point. That's the whole journey of the show. Though, okay, okay, okay. Here, okay. Here's the, the rule. Here's 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 the rule. Dr. Tema, the rules for Dr. Tema is that everyone gets one little chance. One chance. You, get one, you, know, the, you know the saying. You know the saying. Like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame look, on me. Look I how mean, many times he like, fucking this, killed so many people. He got a lot of shit. Like, similar to the bold Batman and Joker story, like, even if you were, like... I don't want to commit that. Much, can, but can, the point you, is, you kill one person, well, fine. Point, you kill two people. Okay, hundred people. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the thing is, what I'm trying to go here is that I mean, Johan more than likely will still be killing other people, and like he'll be very selfish that you don't want to pull the trigger at the cost of everyone else's it's, it's expense. You know, so brainwashed. That's the point, like of the self-sacrifice in that story. If you were to kill him, you you stain your own hands to secure the security of other people. And it's not just justified well, right because hero. I mean the guy is a the, doctor in the torment. The thing is, so, he, he is so brainwashed that even if his like journey was completed and he got revenge for Nina, he still basically has the same ideals about humanity, and he's still going to go around basically doing stuff because he's a guy with no purpose other than just enjoying himself, causing all this pain and suffering. I know. I mean, like the guy well, that's as true. a kid. If he if he if he if he survived the second country, then probably that's, yeah, maybe he would have. But, right, yeah, but that's guys. the thing, though. It's left so open that we really well, don't know. That's we true. Really guys, don't know if guys, he does. All right, guys, calm down. Z, you've been kind of quiet for a second. What, what do you think about all this? Um, well, I think that for the ending, um, the focus, I felt, was really taken away from the mother and on her choice on which twin to give up. Remember that? That's kind I mean, of a Sophie's like, choice. I'll let you, oh, sorry, I don't want to cut you in, but like... I was saying that a lot of people, they really forget about how important this whole like backstory and the closure between Nina and Johan is and the mother. When it right. comes to the end, they, they forget about how important that is to Johan, um, Temma's decision as well, like, not to shoot That him. is true. But, right, right. Well, but, I, but, but, but what I was about to say was that, I mean, instead of Johan, I mean, it's, I, I, don't, I don't know how you guys felt, but when I was talking about this to like other friends of mine who had finished the series, um, specifically watching it, uh -huh. right? They yeah. felt that the real monster, which is the name of the last episode, the mother. was not Johan. Yeah, it was it was the mother. Yeah, of course. Because I mean, who would just give up like their kid like that, right? Yeah, but it, it is. Yeah, and I mean, it's not it's not just that. It's that she chooses to throw one, hesitates, thinking that it was Nina, and then she she chucks the one that she thinks is Johan. Because she does. Because remember, she gives Nina a name. She doesn't technically give Johan a name, and she she dresses up Johan. Yeah, hence the as famous Nina. monster. No, it, thing, that's so. the whole thing. It's like yeah. uh, the, the... And that's the whole thing that fucks up his identity, and then you get the whole nameless monster book that comes into play, and mm -hmm. how that warps his whole, you know, identity basically. That's how he feels he doesn't have an identity or a purpose. Yeah, and, and right. all he has left is the monster that kind of is within all of us. That that dark corner of your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is the thing. Um, one thing I think we, we kind of have to sort of take into account here is even though it's not really necessarily part of the series, there's this whole like supernatural atmosphere kind of building up Johan as being something almost like an Antichrist sort of figure. Like he, he's really yeah, demonic. Know, so this, you got to remember that too. It's not, well, it's kind of under the surface, but there's a little more to it than just the, the human. You know, it, he might actually be a whole nother level. If the, way, the way that I've always seen that when people bring this up is. Who tells us that he's supernatural and that he's straight away evil? Who tells us that? The Nazis, right? True. Mm -hmm. Now what? Now what happened to him before this? The whole stuff. This is why the stuff with his mother is so important because it's the stuff that happens with his mother that yeah. fucks him up so bad that when he gets to five five one Kinderheim, his whole identity is screwed. His whole his whole psychology is completely messed up. His identity is messed mm -hmm. up, and that's why they're like, well, this kid's like the Antichrist. He's pure evil. He's going to be the next Hitler. He's all these things, but no, he wasn't born that way. He was he, he was turned that way when he got there. So it's it's all the Nazis that are telling Tenma all these stories that he's he's like supernaturally, you know, like really charismatic and all this stuff. Well, it's them that make it up, and they're wrong because it was Nina that went to the Red Rose Mansion. That is true. 
because nobody knows apart from Bonaparte, Nina and Johan that it was her that well, went One there. big thing that kind of reinforces... So they create this whole mythology well, of it. One big thing that kind of reinforces that idea, though. Uh, admittedly, if you're st- sticking strictly to the manga, you're right. It, it was just kind of the Nazi propaganda about that idea that forced that into his identity. But the anime really, really pushes this atmosphere of him really being something more than he is. And that could just be, you know, the whole aspect of atmosphere built up by music and whatnot but it really seems like it's yeah. still there maybe it's not 100 percent, but uh, i still think that's a factor to consider yep yeah i can see that yeah. i can see that but i think like like i think the reason why many people regard like johan well the the how many how many people here like think johan was the real monster instead of his mother uh no i think it's his mother. i think I don't know. I'm kind of torn on that one, to be honest, because there are some things that he does. Well, well, the thing is, well, the thing is, like, even in the storybook, there was two monsters. So wouldn't Johan be like one of the that's two? True. Or it could have been one of the yeah, twins. I mean, if you think yeah. about it. Uh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, because with Nina, I was thinking like, you know, if things turn out a little differently, she would have been the monster. Yeah, that's one thing they were really kind of alluding yeah, to, you know. And, and 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 you know what I say about mm-hmm. that? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, the the possibility of like what he or just said that if Nina could. If she if she ended up being the monster and let's just say you know Johan oh sorry sorry about that uh, Johan wasn't mm-hmm. right what does that say about the people like in the world of monster they have bad judge oh, of character and it's Nazis. <laughs> exactly I mean like what 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 if what if what if they're like the colloquial like monsters that you know I guess Naoki or Sao or whoever was dude, trying to dude, refer dude, to this is, yeah dude, this is I mean, it's monsters creating more monsters in a sense dude this is turning to like yeah. a very deep call well, well <laughs> it, it is <laughs> we, we knew it was going to become a deep well, call well monster so. really is one of those series that speaks to that idea like we don't really know who the monster is the the monster is kind of this idea that's created by the culture around it all these different events it's not just one person so I mean, it, yeah. that's where I think the atmosphere comes from is it's under the surface not just because of Johan it's kind of everybody's perspective even Tenma you know could be the monster so we're still kind of lost on what the well, question was. Now. Well, the, all right. The thing I want to know is, Dad, you seem like you're really defending this point, but uh, are, are you okay with yeah. the fact that Johan got away and he he still you still understand? You've admitted that he is a dangerous yeah. person that is basically still evil, no matter what his origins were. Evil. So you know, I, I mean, aren't the way, you, well, the way yeah, I Dad, it, aren't you at least okay. a, a little bit upset about the ending? A, a little bit, like a little underwhelmed, maybe. No, uh, I'm. I, I've I've always said it that I I really enjoyed the ending and I like the open ending and I like the fact that Tenma didn't kill him because, to me that that, it, you know Tenma sticks to his morals and who he is through the whole story and we you know it's all about the journey of his struggle, and all the weight on his shoulders of all the regret and all the the things that Johan's doing. Well, you know, Dad. So uh, I actually think that's okay. I think that is a decent conclusion. Yeah. But but the thing is, I guess I would have liked it more. If Tenma had crossed that line, it had kind of gone into a darker territory where the lines were somewhat blurred. Because I think that would have made things yeah, I, a little I, more complicated. I, don't, I would have liked that, though, because I think it would have ruined his character. It would have ruined the whole the whole journey of it. You know, oh, if he, well, went, yeah, you know, he, meet, he meets the best of humanity and he meets the worst of humanity for the whole series. Well, but we kind of see, we, well, we kind, but, but we kind of see that Johan isn't necessarily the worst of humanity because he was still somebody who was kind of created by someone else. He wasn't like he was... 100 yeah. percent evil as we said he still has that kind of tragic backstory so you know it, exactly and that, that's that's what that's why i like the fact that temba didn't kill him because we learn about his backstory we learn about why he gets messed up and all the you know terrible things that happened to him as a child well i still think that despite that there are certain times when you have to kind of make that decision and, and that might be difficult to do and maybe Tenma didn't have to do it but someone should have because i still think johan was pretty dangerous and the thing is that one reason why the sympathetic backstory, I think, kind of hurts a little bit is because Johan is often regarded as, like, the greatest villain because he is so manipulative and so charismatic. But the mystery around him and the supernatural idea behind him right. makes him seem kind of villainous. And the sympathetic element eh, could be a possible weakness to make him, honestly, less frightening because he is someone we can kind of comprehend. Less I, I like Less that. I like the fact that we get that because uh, the first half of the series we get this mystery, we get this whole atmosphere of him. Mm-hmm. Like he's re- we know nothing about him. He's like the Joker. He's he's evil for being evil. He kills for killing. And then I like the fact that when it gets to the end of the series, we understand why and how he's become what he's become. He... Otherwise, because here's the thing: if if you'd watched the whole series, mm-hmm. 
he would have been, he, we would just assume that he was mysterious and evil and he just did these things because he did these things. And we never got the whole explanation of the Red Rose Mansion and Nina and the Three Frogs and the Mother and all of that stuff and Bonaparte. If we never got that and it just got to the end and Yoha and Temma went, boom, popped him in the head. You know, well, it, that, that to me would have been far more anticlimactic than him, you know, not killing him. Well, there, there, there's something I want to say about, like, you know, how you two feel about the ending. Like, well, what Merlin said, like, when he was like, maybe it shouldn't have been Tema, it could have been someone else. I was thinking, like, what if it was Nina that shot, uh, let, let, let's just say Johan got shot. Like a mercy. Right? And let's just say like Nina a mercy killing kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Like, like, what I mean, would you guys think okay. about that then? Like, that would have been, that would have been all right. But the thing is, is that we get the whole wrap up of Nina's character when they go to the burnt down like building and she sees him there and that's when she gets her whole memory back and she understands everything that's gone through so I mean a mercy killing would have been all right but that would have sort of like messed up that whole wrap up of their you know coming together and understanding each other well because she kept because she forgave him because she understood he'd done everything well for her. I think that as long as you had one of those bases covered and somebody was able to forgive him despite what he did it would have been fine but it should have either been Nina or Tim I don't think that everybody giving him a pass yeah I think that's a little too easy honestly I think somebody has to make that yeah. somebody has to make that tough call you know well, I'll say my final comments for it. But at the same time, that guy does shoot him though, because he's got his. He kid. does. He does. But he doesn't really know anything. He, he doesn't know anything about Johan though. He's just some random no, guy. No, he was doing it for defense. But that, right. Exactly. That doesn't matter though, because I mean, he's still putting an end to him. Well, well, well Hero, sense. you said you want to do your comments. We'll, we'll wrap this up. Yeah, yeah. I just gonna give my final comments because I mean, well, on that little note, like he was just trying to defend his kid. But what I'm gonna say is that um, like even if Todd were to shoot him, I still feel it wouldn't actually harm the story because. Because personally, I mean, the guy Tenma wasn't killing them out of, you know, out of spite or something, but it was out of, out of actually a true necessity to the world. I mean, like you said, that he met the worst of the people, he seen the the good and people, and I, I personally don't feel that would have like harmed his judgment about anybody else. Like I, I still feel his soul would have remained intact even after he were to, you know, do the execution. I think so too. I, I don't feel I that he could pick himself. He, he went for a lot when he shot Roberto. He couldn't have done it. He just and, you know, and there's the thing in the forest when he could have blown his brains out with the rifle. I know, I don't know, but after that, that's when he was prepared. And I, I kind of feel the series should have ended right there in the fire in the library. That's when mm. it really felt that's where it was supposed to end because we mm. had no indication of the Red Rose Mansion, no indication of um, the three frogs yet either. I'm not even. I think we just barely got like the nameless monster storybook too. I mean, right there was the perfect just, setting. So, so here, what ended. you're saying is you kind of would like a little more mystery to it at the end as well. Well, not more mystery. I mean, like, the revelations are fine. I, I just kind of felt that, if, to me, it's one of those scenes where I, it, it just feels like it was tailored to end there then somehow just got extended its way and got a little a little convoluted in its messaging with the, you know, what events to do to, a little you know, bit. should we take place. But, yeah, but I, I think that was that was there to really test Hemmer's morals when he got to that library. Maybe. And then, then it brought him back down because he couldn't do it and he shot Roberto. Well, and he had to pick himself back up again, and then you've got like Mr. Grimmer later on giving him the whole speech and sort of like bringing him back up again. All right, Dad. Uh, we, well, so, well, well. what are your final comments on this whole thing, Dad? He said you. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'll go last. Okay. Uh, uh, Z, uh, what do you think, man? As we're wrapping up here, final thoughts. Well, I I, I think I do agree with you that I, I felt that yeah. Johan should. Like, even if it wasn't Tamar Nina, right, it should have, he should have, he sh I think he should have died at the end of the, and, like, he shouldn't have gotten off, like, uh, off with the past, like, with everybody, Bas Basically, right? I, I felt like it should Basically, Scott Free. Uh, how, pretty much. I believe he much. died, though, that's the that's thing. That's true. So I believe he died from that. Well, I don't, I don't well, believe well that's true, it is open, that is open-ended, so, uh. It is, yeah. Is, right, that, is, right. that, is that how you feel? That you just, you just, you're satisfied? Cause... Well, actually, well, yeah, that's, that's the way I see it. I, I honestly believe that he didn't survive that second gunshot. And then, you know, well, that's why I, Temer goes I guess that is possible because we never do see a transition between the panel where we see him looking out the window and then the bed is empty. So he could have escaped, he could have died, and it was just some time in the future later. So we don't right. know, and that's yeah. why the author probably did that. Uh, I guess. I mean, that's what that's what Yusawa likes to do. He likes to give you the unexpected, and he likes, you know, when you think he's going right, he's going to go left. That is true. He he is very complicated, and that's cool. Um, my final thoughts on it. I still kind of wish they had, they had gone through with it because making him a little more sympathetic. I, I do think it does make him a little less intimidating, but d despite that, it does make him more complicated and speaks to a lot of the themes that they were exploring. Still, I, I wish that he would have 
th- there would have been some conclusiveness at least to what the resolution was with him and everybody's stance on it because I, I thought that it it could have been cleared up a little more. But you know, guys, I, I just thought of another point to end to end this conversation. Uh-huh. Perfect. Like it's that uh, Urasawa, since you know you mentioned him, I just thought about it that. You know, the, the way he writes, um, especially with this open ending, all of this is fucking intentional. Because <laughs> I was thinking, you know, the fact that it's so, like, um, into the unknown is kind of what raises the the intrigue and the uh, worthiness. It makes you ask more questions. Yeah. Right, right. The mystery. It's something to make you yes, really just, think. Which is, yeah, no, that's what makes it even more, like, score higher in certain points because we kind of... We can go one way or the other, and that's how we pretty much. Are, like, that's how an open ending should be yeah, done. Yeah, it basically. is. In, the, in other words, monsters. Still yeah, oh yeah, no, it doesn't matter. I, just monsters still in, like an excellent series, but I, I just feel like the ending is definitely something people could discuss. Yeah, no, I, I kind of feel like this conversation just end up becoming our opinions. Well, like, okay, would you, <laughs> you give them the execution or yay or nay? So, uh, do you, like, like actually, actually, actually uh, that's what it do, comes do you guys want to like do a quick vote about that? <laughs> Honestly, yeah, go for it. Uh, all right. Well, uh, yeah. all right. I guess if uh, well, the four of us here, if you had to give him the death sentence, uh, would you? Um, you know what? Actually, I think I'd give him life in prison. <laughs> Z. Uh, yeah, g- uh, give him the death sentence. Okay, dead. Um, I think he died anyway, so yeah, <laughs> we get the death sentence. But... You're up. <laughs> I'm going with death sentence, actually, even though I'm, like, the least person to say that. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I guess uh, by majority, Johan would probably die. All right, guys. Well, those were our thoughts on Monster and the ending. Please comment if you've read it, and hopefully we didn't spoil anything for you. What What are your opinions on the ending? What do you think the themes were? What do you think that the author was trying to say about Johan and the ultimate decision that Tema should have made, if you were satisfied or not? All right, uh, Z, what you been going on in your channel lately? Uh, Toriko chapter reviews, got a Kami character video coming out, and I make videos and put them on YouTube. <laughs> uh, Dad, how about you? Don't be all. <laughs> um, I have been creating quite a few videos that are on my little backlog at the moment. I've got a massive anime and video games pickups coming. I've got my first new segment called My Video Game Journey, so check nice. that out. And uh, Hero, how about you? Uh, usually I just do anime reviews, reviews for manga or some random trivia for anime, such as like, uh, like the most recent thing being a fan of, of the Toriko chapter of, you know, Jiro being beastly. <laughs> uh, always no beastly. King. And no king. Yeah, pretty beastly. Oh, uh, Yo. And, uh, let's see. Phone. Well, I mean, this is Merlin and I just did a couple of videos, uh, recently about Spider-Man, Star Trek, a little bit about Monster, this Johan discussion. And I did a new, excellent video. <laughs> and I did a new dramatic reading. Thank you. All right, guys, uh, uh, this has been the Green Clan, and uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, Peace. Ooh, yeah, yeah. What should the fuck say?